somebody and say, I won't go back. Come on, look at somebody and say, I won't go back. I done came too far. Come on, I done came too far. I can't turn around now. Come on, I done, I done came way too far. I can't give up where I'm at right now. God has been too good to me. I could have died, but he kept me. Could have lost my mind, but he kept me. Somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We appreciate God today. Amen. We thank him for being God and being God alone. There's no other God beside him. He's the only one. And there's no God besides him. Amen. He is the only one true and living God. He didn't need any uh, help in creation. He created the heavens and the earth all by himself. Amen. We believe in one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God, Father of all, in you all and through you all. Hallelujah. And we know that he's carrying the name for salvation, which is Jesus. Amen. We honor him and appreciate him today because if it wasn't for him, we would not be here today. If it wasn't for him, we wouldn't have life. We wouldn't have the health, amen, and strength, amen, if it wasn't for him. Thank you, Jesus. We do honor the mouthpiece of this hour, our apostle, my pastor, and father, Apostle C.A. Coward, amen, to the presiding bishop, Bishop Ira J. McLeod, amen, to our district overseer, overseer Kevin Williams, amen, to our district elder, district sons in the faith, amen, Minister Williams, Minister Randall, Minister Woods, amen. Certainly thank God for my mother, amen. Appreciate you, and thank God for our first-time guests. God bless you, we appreciate you coming today. Amen. To our returning guests and friends from Hinesville, God bless you, amen. Amen. You may be seated, amen, in the presence of the Lord, Jesus. Amen. Uh, I want to teach and preach from the message, becoming an addict becoming an addict, and want to be bound by the right addiction. Wanting to be bound by the right addiction. Amen. And amen. I want everybody to hear this. So if you're in the back, come on out. Amen. Set for the sound team. And let's fill up these front rows if you're in the back. Amen. I want everybody to hear this message. Amen. Put it back, uh, Mike. Put it back where you had it. Amen. I want to be clear about addictions. Addiction comes from doing something compulsively. And when you do it compulsively, what happens is it becomes a habit. And from a habit, then it becomes an addiction. And I believe that we've had several addictions, but our addictions is to the wrong things. Uh, we've been bound by addictions because we were doing the wrong thing too many times. Uh, we've, amen, found ourselves to be addicts of the wrong things. And this is why it's very hard, amen, for you to become an addict of worship because you don't do it enough. You're not an addict of praise because you don't do it enough. You're not an addict, amen, of studying because you don't do it enough. In fact, my brothers and sisters, you're not an addict of prayer because you don't do it enough. And we find ourselves, you know, people could be addicted to cleaning because they clean so much. But then we can't be addicted to God because we're not in him enough. And we have to get to a position in our life where we're doing things for God so much to where it becomes an addiction. And the difference between a habit and an addiction is the addiction is something that you crave. A habit is something that you do out of routine. So we got to get from the routine of God to the crave for God. And I believe that one of the main reasons we don't have a crave for God is because our appetite isn't set for God. Amen. When we have an appetite, amen, you know how you, everybody generally have a favorite food. 
uh, generally, some people, some of y'all don't have favorites, but you have, most people have a favorite selection of food, favorite chips, favorite snack, favorite candy, favorite bubble gum. And we have these favorites because we ate it a lot. And because we ate it a lot, then you have that crazy driving down the road and say, oh my God, I have to, you know, in fact, I have a relative that used to be addicted to Pepsi and couldn't get away from it. And it was so bad, it was uh, I, 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 I got to get me a Pepsi. I got to get me, I, I can't, I, I, I can't move. And some, some people can't focus unless they have that particular thing. And they become an addict because they've done it so much. And this is why we got to be careful of what we do too much because it becomes a crave and then we'll be addicted. And I can't live, I can't breathe, I can't move unless I have this specific thing. And this is why you have, you know, some people that get addicted to drugs, they can't focus because they, if they can't get that high, they can't focus. And we need to get to a place in our life where we're so high on God to where we can't focus. We can't focus on the problems. We can't focus on the natural things. We can't focus on the circumstance. But all I can focus on is, hey, I know that God. You know how some people automatically they say, if it's the Lord's will. And, you know, I'll see you tomorrow if it's the Lord's will. That became an addiction. Say, I, I started saying it. It became a habit. Now I crave to say, if it's the Lord's will, I can't speak before God because I'm caught up in him. Maybe I can make it to that meeting, but I might get caught up in prayer. I might, you know, I, I, I'm running a little bit late to work, and I'm not telling y'all to be late to work. You might get fired. But, and, you know, sometimes I'm late for work because I was caught up in prayer because I have a crave. And, you know, a lot of people get in trouble. In fact, the first man and woman got in trouble in the Bible based upon a crave, a desire. And sometimes we have the wrong desires for the wrong things, and then we get addicted to it. We say, I can't do it. You know how you used to listen to that music when that man broke your heart? And then you got addicted to it. So thus, if, if somebody, if anything, anybody do something wrong to you, the first thing you do, you, you're craving that sound. Okay, I'm, I mean, they're not saying nothing now. You know how you used to listen to them slow jams and it'll, it'll, it'll try to, it, it's like a fix. See, if, I, if, if I can't listen to it, I don't think I can make it. If I can't do this, I don't think I, it's because I got addicted to it. And so we have to use the same methods of addictions and put it in the place of God. When was the, la the last time you had a crave for God? When was the last time you have a starve? You know, you know that stomach could talk to you if, it, if you ain't eat nothing in a long time. That's how your spirit, man, your spirit, man, some of y'all, your spirit is growling and you ain't even paying attention to it. Spirit is growling, starving, can't, you know, trying to get something, but you, you stuck in la-la land somewhere else thinking about everything else except for your crave for God. And we need to get to a place where we have some addicts for ministry. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Hey, hey I, I, I have an addiction to, hey, you know what? I want to make sure that whatever God desire out of me, just that one thing, I'm going to do that. David said that. He said, man, uh, that one thing I seek after, that I can dwell in the house of the Lord. So we need to get to a position in our life where, hey, listen, I know I got all this circumstance, all these problems going on, but I'm so addicted to God. To where I know that God is the problem solver. Somebody shout hallelujah. I want you to get the book of, amen, Genesis chapter 2. And you got to be careful with addictions because some people can be addicted to religion. And carry a strong religious spirit. Go to church out of habit, but not going out of addiction. Wow, it's, 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 it's about to get real now. Some of y'all come to church out of habit. Y'all know y'all got to be here. Or you say, well, pastor going to call. We're going to try to find out where I'm at, so I might as well come. But then a lot of us come to church out of habit, but we're not addicted to it. We're not addicted to the presence. We just want to be a number. Uh, pastor, pastor don't see these seats filled. He's going to call somebody. He's going to call somebody. He's going to try to find out where I'm at. You just want to be a number, but you're not addicted to the presence of God. 
You know why? Because you haven't been in it long enough. And a lot of times, if you have not, you know, experienced the presence of God habitually, you can't be addicted to it. Some people are scared of the presence of God. And some of y'all get nervous. You start feeling God moving. Then you feel something. You say, hold on, let me sit back down because I don't know if I need to, you know, God might make me move. And that's how you got so many people in the church be so stiff because they're scared of the presence of God. They're scared of the power of God because they don't know what that power could do to them. He said, I ain't, oh, I felt something, but I, I don't want to, you know, let me sit back down because somebody might be looking at me. Let me, let me cross my legs because my feet, be, you know, my feet moving a little bit, my hands starting to shake, and I don't want everybody to look at me. But when you get to the presence of God, then you get that craving. You say, I, I can't wait to feel that again. I don't know what I felt, but I just want to feel it again. And that's how people, when they are addicted to drugs, what happens is, they're like, oh, my God, man, that feeling, it felt so good. But they don't know that that, that feeling is hurting them. The feeling is killing them. In fact, that same high that kill you, that give you a natural death, you need the same high that's going to kill your flesh here. You can be addicted, addicted to things that hurt you. Some of y'all are addicted to relationships that hurt. Oh, God. I'm, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not trying to. Oh, God. I'm about to get in trouble in here. We get addicted to the wrong type of man. Oh, God. You know, the verbally, physical, mental, emotionally abusive one. We get addicted to that. Because that's the only thing that I've ever attracted. And because I attracted that habitually, now it's become an addiction. I'm addicted to the wrong. Lord, y'all ain't saying nothing. And then you want to get married to that person because you're addicted to them and they're no good for you. Oh, my God. That addiction is strange, you know. I, you know, I, and I'm going to testify because I, I have addiction to, you know, I have eczema on my legs and, and I get addicted to scratching. And, and it, it, it feels so good but it hurts so bad and I'm trying uh, why y'all looking at me like that it's alright I'm scratching now look <laughs> but but sometimes you know and, and, and see it's been so crazy to some nights I'm waking up like man how my leg bleeding how am I scratching in my sleep and it feels good but it hurts and a lot of times we're addicted to so many things that's killing us. And you just get so addicted to it. Because it feels good in the moment. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Don't get caught up being addicted to the wrong things that feel good in that moment. Feel good in that moment, then years later you still sore from it. Some of y'all are addicted to pain. You just like people to hurt you. Just like to hurt. Want your heart to hurt. Want to be broken. Y'all know some people ain't, and I'm going to get to the scripture, but the Lord just, let me, let me just talk a little bit. You know, the Lord will be leading you out of something, but because you're addicted to that relationship that's destroying you, you will stay right there in it. God, since y'all ain't going to talk, let me talk to Facebook, Instagram, and wherever else we're at. You got to get out of that relationship that's killing you because you're addicted to it. Beating you up on Wednesday, giving you flowers on Thursday, don't justify it. Yelling and screaming at you, you can't even think straight because you can't even think straight because all you hear in your mind is somebody yelling at you, but you're addicted to that. Give you that little apology, then you're back over there. Hello, y'all here with me? We got to get out of, and, 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 and no, sometimes people get addicted to doing such a wrong thing. You, got, you have men that can get addicted to being womanizers. <laughs> y'all brothers ain't going to say nothing now, huh? Y'all just were saying amen when I was talking about, y'all ain't, y'all with me? Because what happens is, in the world now, and this is why you got to ensure that you have to convert behaviors. 
You got to change behaviors. While you was in the world, if that was your thing, and, and see, sometimes you as a man, you, you, you're you addicted to getting these women and women and women, and, and it becomes a habit. Then it becomes an addiction. Now you're addicted to getting different people. And you not even knowing that's hurting you. Because when you, oh, I'm about to hurt some of y'all brothers' feelings, but when you have a man that cannot be committed and love somebody, it plays on an insecurity role in him. Oh, God. Because, see, see, when I'm not secure here or on this, come on, y'all sit right here. Come on, make some room for the saints coming in. Come on, sit up there. Come right here. Come on. It's all right. Y'all make some room. When, 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 when you can have men that can get addicted to doing that, what happens is it's because the insecurity in him. And a lot of y'all addicted to being insecure. Jesus, I wish I could take this jacket off this moment. We, 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 we got to get to a place where we are secure in ourselves. Stop being addicted to insecurity because it plays a role on your manhood. And that's when the pride kick in. Because in my mind, she, she just like the other one because she got a man and she talking to me. So now in my, man, in my mind, every woman is like that. Then I start looking at myself. Am I not what I should be? All right, let me move on. Y'all ain't saying nothing. So many addictions out there. And we don't know how to break them. See, what you have to do is get rid of one addiction and get called on to another one that is spiritual. Amen. You know, sometimes how for some of y'all, y'all addicted to isolation. Uh oh. Don't want nobody to talk to. Don't need no. Say I don't need no. Let me tell you something. You need somebody. I don't care how big and bad you think you are. You need somebody. Get addicted to isolation and shutting off and shutting down. Addictions to shutting down on people. Nobody can't say nothing to you without you shutting down. I got a child like that. They say one thing to it. They shut down for a week. I say, hey, hey, what's going on? Addicted to shutting down because I don't know how to convert my addictions. Because I got to change my crave. You might have lift your hands and say, Lord, help me change my crave. Y'all ain't say that loud enough. Say, Lord, help me change my craves. down at a Genesis. We want to be, and you know, Adam and Eve, they they messed us up. <laughs> we want to be honest. They, they messed us up. Put us in a position to where, see, if they never desired the wrong thing, we wouldn't be in the position that we are now. Why y'all ain't talking? I forgot some of y'all deep. Y'all like, y'all got it all together though. <laughs> One of the, the, the first sin had everything to do with a desire and a crave for the wrong thing. You say, hold on, wait a minute. Now, God makes this garden, places the man in the garden, it's fruit everywhere. In fact, there's so much stuff in this garden that there was no need to touch the one thing that they touched today from. Why y'all ain't talking? And you know, people are so addicted to doing the wrong things. People want to do that one thing that's wrong just to, you know, and, and, and because people's mindset is I just want to get the thrill. Y'all ain't talking. I just want to get the little feeling. It's, I, just, I just like the thrill of it. It, it just feel good that, you know, it, 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 it does something to the adrenaline in me. I, I just get that adrenaline rush when I'm doing that one wrong thing. Genesis 2, amen, and 16. There's a clear message. Very clear message. 
that God gave. It wasn't no mystery. They didn't have to use no calculator. They didn't have to ask no question. It was very plain and clear. Read, uh-huh. And the Lord God commanded the man. And saying, the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat. Uh-huh. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it, for in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. Now, God placed Adam in the place where he had liberty and freedom to do everything except that one. He just had one rule. Oh, God. It ain't like us now. We It's, it's a mirror of the rules for us now. Yes. Can't do this, can't do that. Can't. You know, and not, not just in the church aspect of it, but even in the world. You know how you want to run that stop sign, just run out there. It's just it's rules. He had one rule out of the entire, amen, aspect of his living. One rule. Don't eat from this tree. But because there was a desire it was some eye connection. This is why y'all got to be careful what y'all looking at. Because a lot of times you can get addicted to stuff that you look at. Y'all know what I'm talking about late night on Instagram. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Sometimes you start watching that stuff and then you beca it, it becomes an addiction. And it's like, if I don't watch it, I can't make it until the next day. Y'all ain't saying much. If I don't watch this little show... On my phone, I can't make it until the next day. I can't make it the next minute because I'm addicted to it. And see, it, you have to break the behaviors because if you don't break the behaviors, it'll slip into addiction. Are y'all listening to me? Yes. And see, we slide, in, and, and it'd be landslides. We, we, we slide into addictions because we was slowly doing it over and over, and we wasn't stopping. Slow down, do it again. And then after a while, it's a craving. So now when I crave, and, and see, everybody in this building, except y'all little kids, everybody else grown. Y'all little kids, y'all ain't grown now. <laughs> y'all live with y'all mama, y'all ain't grown. <laughs> live with y'all daddy, y'all ain't grown. Let me make that plain. But everybody else is grown, and you can do whatever you want. So when those craves happen, that's where that mind battle come in at. So this is why the Bible talks about the, 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 the mind and spirit. It's a war zone going on in the mind. Let me give you this. Go down into Romans. Somebody shout hallelujah. Look at your neighbor. Say, neighbor, pastor talking about me. Uh-oh. Saints getting quiet now. Watch this. Go down into Romans chapter 8. Hallelujah. All right. Now, start at start at verse number one. This is how this is the, the habit that you want to create. And so if we cannot create the right habits, we'll fall into all the wrong habits. Yes, Amen. Amen. And you know, that's just like, you know, most smokers it became a habit. And you know, you, you, uh, you got people that call themselves social smokers. You know what that is? Why y'all so quiet? You got social, you know, you got social smokers meeting that they gather together and smoke on occasions. You know, it's just be like social drinking and stuff like that. But then, you know, when people have done it so much every weekend, you know, every weekend, uh, uh, we'll start here, twice a month, then it turns into every weekend. Then it turns into every week. Then it becomes every day. So the habit starts to kick off because I, when I go to with my boys, hang out with my friends, this is something that we do out of habit. Yeah. It started with something that I just like to do, and then it became a habit of something that I like to do. Then it became an addiction of something that I like to do. Yeah. I wish I had a few of y'all to shout hallelujah. <laughs> All right, read, uh-huh. There is therefore... Now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. For the law of the spirit of life, the flesh, 
God sending his own son in likeness of sinful flesh and for sin, condemned sin in the flesh, that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not. Y'all ain't saying nothing. I got to do things differently. And so now, if I want to have a crave for studying, guess what? I gotta, this is why the Bible talks about training up a child the way it should go. Training up a child don't just deal with the natural aspect, but it deals with the spiritual aspect as well. Why? Because everybody that comes into the church, baptized in Jesus' name, they're born again. Thus, if they're born again, I got to train the child. You know, routine, I brush my teeth. Then it becomes a habit. And I sure hope it's an addiction. down to prayer. Same thing when it comes down to worship. Same thing when it comes down to praise. Same thing when it comes down to being a part of the body of Christ. I'm addicted to coming to church. I'm addicted to going to prayer meetings. This is a, I, I've become an addict. So I can't survive without it. And you should have a breakdown if you can't get it. Some of y'all go the whole day without praying. They say nothing to God and nothing in your mind click because it's not. I mean, don't even say thank you for it. I ain't been talking about long prayers. Some of y'all don't even wake up and say, God, I just thank you. Don't have a crave or an addiction to get up and talk to God. And see, you know, a long time ago, some of y'all would come to me and say, Pastor, I don't know what's going on, but I'm talking to God, but I just can't feel him. You know why? Because at one point in your life, you was addicted to that feeling, and then that feeling slipped away. You said, hey, hey, I, I, I need to feel that again. Somebody shout hallelujah. Watch right, this. Go down to the Galatians. Galatians 5 and 17. Uh-huh, read. For the flesh... Lust is against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. Now, these two things are what? Contrary. Contrary. The one to the other. Uh-huh. So that ye cannot do the thing that ye would. So now there's a war zone going on. And lust, I know most cases of scenario, when you think about the word lust, everybody think about something to do with sex. Or it has something to do with body parts. Or it has something. That ain't necessarily, you don't, some people lust after being married. I'm about to get in trouble here. So when we look at lust, that doesn't necessarily, lust is just a crave for something. You know, the Bible talks about being drawn away from your own. Everybody have their own lust. Everybody have a lust. Doesn't necessarily mean that it's something that's, you know, uh, somebody may lust after a car. It's just a desire. All right. And I was going through the scriptures. They said, man, they said, you know what? I really met a pastor of church that go through so many scriptures. I said, well, you, you want what it say, don't you? I said, well, I'm used to going to church. They read one, one in 13, uh-huh, read. Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. Uh -huh. For God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempteth he any man. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust. Of his what? His own lust. Own. So everybody need to take own. You can lust. Y'all ain't saying nothing. The lust that you have or the desires that you have can change. But it's based upon what you're doing. Because you can't have a lust unless you've seen something to lust after. Now y'all ain't talking. Crave for some ham hocks. You never had it before. You can't have a crave for something that you've never had or something that you've never experienced. And so what we have to do is I have to convert my crave. Going to do this body any good? I need something that's going to help me change. Y'all follow me? All right. Go back down there. Amen. To the book of Romans, chapter one. Let me show you what. Let me show you what a an addiction can do to a person. And this is why you have to be able to curb. You know, they used to talk about curb your appetite. Anybody ever heard that before? You got to be able to control it. Watch this. This is very powerful because you have specific individuals knowing the judgment of God and the punishment of God, and they're still doing something because they're addicted. 1 in 28, I'll read. 
And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge. Now, we have knowledgeable people of the word of God, the preach word of God, the knowledgeable of it, and the scripture. Bible said they did not like to retain the knowledge. Uh-huh, read. God gave them over. God gave them over. To a reprobate mind. Uh-huh. To do those things which are not convenient. Yes. Being filled with all unrighteousness, uh -huh. fornication, wickedness, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventor of evil things, disobedient to parents, without understanding, covenant breakers, things are worthy of death. Now watch this. The Bible said they knew the judgment of God, but they couldn't stop doing what they was doing. And when you know the judgment of God and you continue to do it, what be addicted to this? Because this addiction can cause me my life. Y'all ain't saying that. This addiction is hurting me. And it's killing me slowly. These folks knew the judgment of God, but they had an addiction. It's just like killers, people that just kill people randomly. They got an addiction. They know that either they're going to die or they're going to People that are addicted to stealing stuff. I don't understand it, but people are addicted to stealing. And once I become addicted to this, see, in the mind of the, the thief, do people go to Walmart and steal all of that? Put it in the bag. Scan everything for like 99 cents or something in, 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 in the store. So you have people that in their mind, they're addicted to this. I'm addicted to go to jail. One day, somebody can potentially take me out of here, but I do it out of addiction. So now I got to addict myself. Let me tell y'all something. This is why it's very important. No matter, no matter where you are, you are a praiser. No matter where you are, you're a worshiper. No matter where you are, you pray. Because that creates that habitual vibe of, hey, I got to pray. I'm going to pray. I'm going to pray. And okay. That guy got real quiet. <laughs> Every church function is very important that the church is there. Because now I'm doing it compulsively and it became a habit. From habit, then I become addicted to ministry. This is why you need to be out there evangelizing all the time. Oh, God, that's real quiet. Talk about that evangelism, boy. Everybody start looking at their Bibles like I talk, said a verse or something. 1 Corinthians 16, watch this. 16 and 15. All right, y'all y'all, y'all with me? Okay. All right, read. I beseech you. I beseech you. Brethren, uh -huh. ye know the house of Stephanus. You know the house of Stephanus. That it is the first fruits of Achaia. Uh-huh. And that they have addicted themselves. They did what? Addicted that, themselves. You know what? See, see, the Bible said they addicted themselves. Meaning that they wasn't forced. Oh, God. And people got to force you to get. Oh, God. I'm about to get in trouble now. People got to force you to come to Sunday school. People got to force you to come to morning service. People got to force you to come to night service. People got to force you to pray. People got to force you to. Y'all ain't talking. Got to force you to get on the prayer line. Got to force you to come to prayer service. Got to force you to praise your God. Why, why, why you got to be forced to praise God? Come on, praise the Lord, everybody. Come on, everybody need to get up. Come on, praise God. Everybody stand up. Let's worship him. If I came here, I came here with the praise. When I came here, I came with my worship. You don't have to pump or prime me because the same God that woke God up is the same God that woke you up, woke me up. The same God that blew in my body is the same God that blew in your body. The same God that delivered me. I'm addicted to doing it. It's not out of religious behavior or, amen, out of tradition, but I'm really addicted to The Bible said they addicted themselves to ministry. Well, pastor, what does that mean? That means that they would not stop, you know, when you're addicted to something, nothing can stop you from getting there. When you're addicted to drugs and you got you got a specific dope man you go to and you can't in the city, is somebody in the next city, is somebody in the state that I can get it from because I need it now. Oh, y'all ain't saying nothing. When you're addicted, 
by any means necessary, I have to get it. I don't care if nobody roll their eyes at the church at me because I'm addicted to God. By any means necessary, I'm coming through the door. I God, because this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad. Somebody shout hallelujah. I need to look at you. Dark and cloudy it is in my life. I'm still going to lift my hands and shout hallelujah. It doesn't matter. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me. It doesn't matter how bad or how ugly it gets because I'm addicted to God. I still lift my hands because I'm addicted to God. I'm still going to leap for joy. And the praise team leader don't have to tell me to praise him. I'm going to come in here praising him. The praise leader don't have to tell me to clap my hands. I'm going to come and clap him. The praise leader don't have to tell me to dance. When I come when I come into his presence, I'm going to dip it to God. And ain't no devil in hell can stop my addiction. You can try to block me, but I'm going to jump over it. You can try to scream it, but I'm going to look through it. I don't care what you throw at me. I say, I'm chasing after you. No matter what I have to do because I need you. Is there anybody in here that just needs a little more of Jesus. I know just a few of y'all got it all together. I know a few of y'all got everything in line, but uh, Pastor Eli Demetrius Porter Sr., I still need a little more of Jesus. Somebody shout hallelujah. And I don't know about you, amen, but David said, I was glad when they said unto me, and we need more people that is excited about coming to the house of God. We need more people that said, I don't care how bad my day was, I don't care how y'all ain't saying nothing to me. I don't care how ugly it was. Amen. The Bible says that weeping and I'm crying right now, but I know that joy is coming in the morning. Somebody shout hallelujah. Look at somebody on your row and say, neighbor, I know you might be going through right now, but if you addict yourself to God, everything, y'all ain't saying nothing, everything going to be all right. In fact, all folks used to say, ah, I got a feeling. Lord have mercy, I feel the Holy Ghost in here. I got a feeling that everything is going to be all right. Matter of fact, grab your neighbor by the hand and say, neighbor, let me prophesy to you right now. Everything's going to be all right. Your money going to be all right. Your family going to be all right. Your house going to be all right. Your loved one's going to be all right. Your child going to be all right. Your education going to be all right. Your business going to be all right. You're going to be all right. Somebody shout glory. Woo, glory to God. Somebody shout hallelujah. Y'all be seated. Y'all making me nervous. Bible says, 1 Corinthians 16. Read that again. 16, 15. Read, huh? I beseech you. I be of a care. And that they have addicted themselves. Now, it's the first part of the ministry of Achaia. And they addicted themselves. Can I be honest with y'all? A lot of you all that came in this church and got baptized in Jesus' name. And if you're first fruits, you need to be addicted to the ministry. You're the fruit from the labor. The toil and the prayer. Be by addicting yourself to the ministry of God. Let me tell you something. The only way that you can addict yourself is that you got to come more. Let's go. If you're an usher, be dedicated to that ministry. If you're on a choir, be dedicated to that ministry. If you're on a praise, amen, leaders, y'all need to make sure you're addicted to the ministry. The musicians, be addicted. Yes. Preachers, be addicted. Yes. Be so addicted that you got messages. I don't know. So, because we don't study to preach. Yes. Not supposed to study to preach. That studying is for you. The messages come through the study, but you don't wait until the time for you to preach and talk about let me go study. Yes. It'll be in prayer. And making sure that whatever message. That's why I make sure when I'm back there, I'm taking so long because I'm praying. I got so much stuff that I can give, but I'm praying. 
Lord, which way do you want me to go? And I know that this ministry needs to be addicted to God. Somebody shout hallelujah. We got to get back to being addicted to the altar. I remember a couple years ago I was riding around with somebody and they was new to the area. They seen the church. They came to the church, visit the church. They said, wow, it's, why is it cars? Y'all got service tonight or uh, throughout the day? I said, no, the church is always open. People are praying. Every time you arrive by this building, you will see ch- cars out here because people was addicted to prayer. At 12 o'clock, what, last year or the year before that, at 12 o'clock every day around that time, people will see cars out here because people was coming to the church to pray. Nowadays, you can't find cars on a Sunday morning. My God. How y'all ain't saying that? What are the saints doing? A lot of these chairs missing. Y'all need to come on out here. Where everybody go? Saints don't start walking. Sunday morning, can't find cars. But used to prayer time. Prayer. People were so addicted and they said, well, they said, man, Pastor, how you got, how do you get people to be there throughout the day? I said, it ain't me. When you got a relationship with God, it goes beyond pastor. So pastor car don't be out, don't have to be outside for you to be there. Oh God. I might start packing, parking in the back of the church to see how many saints really. Say, oh, pastor ain't going to be here. Oh, I got a few more minutes then. <laughs> I don't see car, pastor car ain't out there. Bible says tonight, everything all right. <laughs> it's, it's, eight four, it's 8 o'clock. Pastor out there yet? So is your relationship, do you have a relationship with me? Now, I can't put you anywhere. It's my job to offer you. It's my job to present you. I can't put you nowhere. Oh, God, y'all ain't saying nothing. And I only know what you tell me. Y'all ain't saying nothing. God know the rest. So if I'm not here, Hell. Because I'm addicted to ministry. Amen. I learned that a long time ago when I first started pastoring. I'd never tell nobody where I was going. No, 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 no. no yeah. I used to tell people that I'd be going somewhere and then I'd get the report nobody went to church. I said, well, what in the world's going on here? But then I stopped telling people. I just tell the brethren, the ministers that I know going to be there. I said, you tell the ministers and I tell my mom. Man, I'm, I'm going to be out of town. I'll, I'll be in contact with y'all. And other than that, no. You know, some, some people don't see Pastor Carl. They ain't coming to church. <laughs> because they're not addicted to ministry. They're not addicted. They haven't found themselves addicted to God. And we have to get back to that place. It's a 12 o'clock noon every day. And can I tell you something? The church is open every single day. And y'all used to be in here. Why oh, y'all so quiet? Saints used to be in here praying. Some people come in here and worship. Some people come in here and play music. Anything. But they was addicted to just being here. Well, I, I, I can pray at my house. I, you can. Praying at your house is fine. But your, your house ain't the house of prayer. That's, a, that's, the, that's the Randall address. That's the Williams address. That's the, that's the Woods address. It ain't the house of prayer. So there's a different type of answer or a different type of feel. See, a lot of times, you know, you have too much foot traffic going outside your house. That's why when you're down there praying, you feel like somebody's standing on your neck. You need to get to the house of prayer. That's I don't understand. Every time I pray at my house, it seems like somebody's standing beside me. Y'all ain't saying that. When you have a lot of, you know, spiritual warfare going on and your house don't even know what's going on, that's why God said, you know, when we, when this building, that's why when we came and we made sure that we prayed in it. Sanctified. Y'all ain't saying nothing. 
Because what you do at your house, you can't do at the church. Hey, y'all ain't saying that. So, so, so if, 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 if that's the case, I'm not telling you don't pray at house because you should pray at house. You should have a prayer life. But whenever you have the chance to get to the house of God to pray, you need to be in the house of God to pray. And addict yourself to it. I want to be addicted to this. And you want to get past or get beyond habit. I got two more scriptures. I'm going to let y'all go. Luke 8 and 14. You got certain type of addictions that could stunt your growth. Certain type of addictions that can stop you from moving. In fact, those addictions are those ones that kill you. Luke chapter 8. And start at 14. Uh -huh. And that which fell among thorns are they which when they have heard go forth are choked with cares and riches and pleasures of this life and bring no fruit to perfection. So you have some people that are not addicted to ministry and they're caught up in the cares and the pleasures of this world. It chokes them. And if I'm choking, there's no life that could come forth. In essence, if I'm choking, there's no fruit that can come forth. I can't be productive if I don't have any air. I can't be productive if I'm not addicted. Read that again. And with them, they uh, and that which fell uh -huh. among thorns are they which, when they have heard, go forth, go and, forth, and are choked. And our children. It's dealing with one, those ones that had the word. That seed that was placed in them. The word. Said so they were choked. Uh huh. With cares. With the cares. And see, sometimes we get so caught up in the cares of this life. We get nice jobs. We have a nice salary. We can get caught up in that. And we can't be productive in ministry. Amen. My God. And then some people, can I be honest with you? Some people that are, are addicted to work. Because it offsets the mind. It takes them from, you know, the, the problem that they have, the issues that they have, as long as they work and they can't think about it. I'm addicted to working. Amen. Amen. And, and now y'all brothers, y'all need, need to have jobs. I ain't saying don't get no jobs. Y'all men need to make sure y'all got jobs. That's right. Amen. But don't get too addicted to where you have no room to be addicted to God. And this is why one of my favorite scriptures, and we're going to finish this, choke with the cares and riches and what? Pleasures. So you got cares, you got riches, and you got pleasures. Y'all write those things down. Cares, what are you caring about? Where your cares at? That money and things that please you in life. Cares, money. And pleasures. These are things that could choke you if you ain't careful. And some of you all are wondering why you haven't got to where you need to be financially because God knows that it'll choke you. I'm trying to figure out why you ain't get that, you know, why you ain't got that big big bank yet because it'll choke you. Some of y'all don't ain't been in church because you got your income tax. That, that done choked you. People get income tax money and think they rich. That little $6,000, they're gone the next day. <laughs> Down there getting seafood. <laughs> y'all ain't said, yeah, let me get the crab legs. I, I, you know they're you know they $21 a pound. Yeah, just give me 10 pounds. This is all right. <laughs> yeah, give me 25 pounds of shrimp. No, no, no don't worry about it. You want something too? I mean, I, I, everybody on my tab. Everybody on my tab. <laughs> you, know, you know how people, people do what they get a little money, boy. They, they don't put a dime in offer, but out there, y'all ain't saying nothing. Ooh, Lord. I'm about to get in trouble now. You cheerfully giving them for all that money out there coming to church. Well, gotta, gotta give today again an offering. Y'all get quiet now. I, I, why y'all looking at me like that? Y'all not telling the truth. <laughs> 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 
the cares, that money. And God, you know, God promised some of y'all in the church, some of y'all going to get real wealthy. Some of y'all, not everybody. Because everybody can't handle it. Y'all be in Barbados somewhere with, sipping on lemonade on a Sunday morning. <laughs> Time of pastor, I don't think I'll be in church today. Well, what's going on? I just took another vacation. I just took another one. You were here last Sunday. Yeah, I just, you know, just under the weather this week. Over there, feet up in the sand. and <laughs> Saints ain't saying nothing. Well, Pastor, don't we got, don't we got, uh, we got live. I can watch it live. I, I, I'm being honest. These are some of the things. This is why a lot of folks ain't getting what they, you know, some people got to crave to have a lot of money, but some of y'all get money, y'all, y'all, y'all forget God. Because some of y'all done got little jobs, got a little, little extra little salary, make them $12 an hour, you done forgot God. <laughs> got that little job, you done forgot all about God. That $12 ain't <laughs> That's $12 ain't much. <laughs> Amen. So this is why, you know, and, and, and back to what I was saying, God going to bless some of you all because y'all are ministry minded. And y'all don't mind giving up information to help others get to where you are. See, God don't really like to bless, especially people in the church. Now, people in the world, it doesn't matter. But people in the church, God bless those that's not going to be stingy. Let that sit for a little bit. God, God, God bless. He, he, he's going to bless the ones that's not stingy. Those ones that's not going to be, you know, fearful of giving up information. Those ones that don't mind blessing. Yeah. Why y'all ain't saying that? Don't you know when you get blessed, you're supposed to be a blessing? Yeah. Go down there to, to Genesis 12. I got to let y'all go. I think I'm over my time. All right, don't tell me that. I keep y'all here to this tonight. <laughs> yeah, I know I got a lot of wind in me. <laughs> all right, all right, Reed. I, I think the, the I don't think I've ever taught a message less than an hour before, man. I'm trying to do better. Try to get better. All right, read. Uh huh. Now the Lord has said unto Abram. God said unto Abram. Get thee out of thy country. Yes. And from thy kindred. Uh huh. And from thy father's house. Uh huh. Unto a land that I will show thee. Yes. And I will make of thee a great nation. I'm going. Who, who back there? Don't get, get the scripture right. Everybody got their Bible. All right. I'm going to make of thee a great nation. And I will bless thee. I'm going to bless thee. And make thy name great. And make thy name great. Uh huh. And thou shalt be a blessing. I'm going to bless you. Make your name great. And you're going to be a what? Blessing. So the Bible says that God made Abraham or he blessed Abraham. And when he blessed him, he said, when I bless you, you're going to be a blessing. All right, read, read it again so we can get it right. I just got the scripture right. All right, read it again, huh? One. Uh, go back, to, go to two. And I will make of thee. I'm going to make thee. A great nation. A great nation. And I will bless thee. I'm going to bless you. And make thy name great. I'm going to make your name great. And thou shalt be a blessing. See, and see, that's why God uses people. He bless certain people that's still going to be a blessing to others. You know how some of y'all is when y'all start God start giving y'all stuff and y'all y'all think y'all you know high and mighty your mind high you can't deal with people you don't go to no you don't go to no fellowships because you just think you're too good now because you done got a little bit of money or got you a new little car so now you think that nobody could really deal with you so God he, and, and so what God does is he give little blessings like that just to see where you at. Y'all ain't saying nothing. God, you know, I think, you know, and I'm not bragging on what I've done, but when God gave me, I made sure I gave in the house of God. Yes. I've, I've gave, in this church, I gave $5,000 at one time because God blessed me. Yes. And, I, and, 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 and this is why I haven't worked for nobody in uh, five years. Because I know how to be a blessing. And I know how to give information. I know how to put in the people so that they can grow. Yeah. And sometimes we, we got to get to a place in our life where we can get addicted to that. Addicted to being a blessing to somebody else. And it ain't necessarily mean you got to give people money, but 
a word of wisdom could be a blessing. Amen. Encouraging word can be a blessing. Amen. Amen. All right. Where I had you at before that? Oh, go back down to that choking and I'm going to close. We want some of y'all, we about to resuscitate some of y'all today. Come on, read. And that, Luke 8 and 14. Yes. And that which fell among thorns. Luke 8, 14. And that which fell among thorns are they which when they have heard go forth and are choked with the cares and riches and pleasures of this life. And bring no fruit to perfection. No fruit. There's no fruit. My God. And sometimes we can be servants of the wrong addiction. Servants of the wrong lust. And we don't want the, the cares or the money, amen, or the pleasures to destroy us. Amen. Last scripture I promise, Titus 3 and 3. Thank you, Jesus. Three and three read, uh-huh. For we ourselves. For we ourselves. Also were sometimes foolish. We were foolish. Disobedient. Disobedient. Deceived. Uh-huh. Serving divers lusts. Serving divers lusts. And pleasures. So I could serve my pleasure. My God. Some of us are serving our pleasures. Serving our lusts. Amen. And sometimes we can get into that place where we're serving our pleasure, serving our lust. Then we have that strong desire, strong addiction. But I tell you something. We had a lot of men in the Bible that were messed up. God still used them. Got a lot of people in the Bible that did a lot of the wrong things. But one person that I admire in the scriptures is David and Paul. And the reason being is that David, he had a problem. He messed up, but he never stopped praying. Amen. David never stopped his worship. David never stopped his praise. Even in air, and, and I think sometimes what happens is sometimes we get in jams and mess up, but we lose our prayer. We Amen. lose our faith. We lose our love for God. But one thing about David, he said, man, I, I messed up, but I, I, I still got to. He took a little shower, washed himself off. He said, I still got a job to do. I'm still accountable. And sometimes we get messed up in little jams and then we get so down and depressed. No, get yourself up. Amen. In fact, the first man that sinned on this uh, with, uh, with God was Adam. And when Adam sinned, God went looking for him. Amen. And some of y'all get into jams and y'all start running away from God and God trying to chase you. You're going to be chasing him. My God, that's true. God, I want to chase you. I messed up, but I'm, I'm trying to chase you. I, I still, I still got to have my prayer life. I still got to worship. I still got to praise. Paul was transparent. He said, church, y'all know that I had problems, and y'all still received me. He was transparent. He said, I, I, don't know, I got some problems within myself, but the ministry still received me. Y'all ain't saying nothing. He didn't stop preaching, didn't stop praying, didn't stop ministering, didn't stop writing. In fact, Paul was so addicted to God that in the scriptures, although he was locked up sometimes, but in other cases, he was talking about his addiction. He said, I'm a prisoner for God. I mean, what, what did he mean by that? He didn't mean that he was locked up. He said, I just can't get away from him. You know, when you go to prison, you ain't got so much to move around in. He said, I, I can't get away from God. I'm a prisoner. And when you're a prisoner for God, that means you got a strong addiction. Meaning that you may try to leave, but that addiction draws you back in. 
Some of y'all trying to run away from God. But because you're addicted, you can't. Okay, this is my last week. I, I'm done with this. I'm tired. I'm tired of this journey. There's too, too many ups and downs. Y'all ain't said nothing. You're trying to drive and you feel your steering wheel. You, you done, God done got you in a Tesla. I think driving you, you try to leave. That thing, whoop. <laughs> Pull you back in. So you can't get away from God when you've addicted yourself to. And see, and some of y'all, some of y'all just can't leave because you just been coming to church out of habit. And then you get at you at you trying to stay away from church, then you find yourself on Facebook watching the ministry. <laughs> and then you don't want to click on it because you don't want nobody to know that you're watching. <laughs> you know, they just hit hit the hit the X on there so you can hear the sound, but you don't want to click on the video because you don't want the, the media team to say, oh. Sister such and such still watching. She ain't been in church in two weeks. And she's been watching the whole time. She's addicted to you. Can't even get that habit, man. You can't even get away from it. Lift your hands. Everyone stand. Let's pray. Lord. Hallelujah. Come on, extend your hands. Let's hallelujah, Jesus. Lord, I want to be addicted to you. God, I don't want it to just be a small feeling. But this addiction, Lord, I don't want to be broken away from you. Even when I feel myself pulling away, even when my flesh is tugging on me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God, I want to be so addicted to where you yoke me. Thank you, Lord. Yoke me, God. Lord, I want to be equally yoked with you. Thank you, Jesus. You know, you said in your scriptures for us to take your yoke upon us. And God, you wanted us to take that yoke and be upon us specifically so we could be addicted. Lord, I want to be addicted. I want to pray for you all that want your addiction to be for God and you want to change some of the addictions that you have, the natural addictions, and you want to be addicted to God, just come quickly. I want to pray with you. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Just lift your hands right where you are. God, I want to be addicted. Right where you are, just talk to him. Hi, Lord, I want to be addicted. I want to be addicted. Addict me to your presence. Addict me to your will. Addict me, Lord. Addict me, God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Addict me. Thank you, Jesus. I, I want to be addicted to you. I want to be addicted. God, I'm sorry for the craves of everything else and not you. Lord, I want to be addicted to your will. I want to be addicted to your presence. Hallelujah. I want to be addicted to your presence. God, I want to be addicted to your perfect will for my life. God, I know I haven't been right. I know I haven't done all things right. I know I haven't died at all I's and crossed all T's when it came down to you, God. But Lord, I want to be addicted to you. Help me, God, to curb my appetite. Help me, Lord. To change my desires. Lord, I need more of you. I need more of you. I need more. 
I need more, I need more, I need more. Hallelujah, Jesus. Lord, forgive us. Forgive us, God. God, forgive us for where we were. Forgive us for what we've done. Lord, forgive us for not desiring you more. Forgive us for not praying like we should. Forgive us, Lord, for not being on duty as we should, God. Hallelujah. Lord, we want to be addicted, Jesus. We want to be addicted, Lord. Addict us to God. Let us feel something different, God. Ah, yeah. Lord, we want to feel something greater. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. It's the drawing power to draw near. Hallelujah. God, I want more of you. Lord, less of me. God, remove my desires. God, remove my desires for natural things. Put me in a place to hunger. Hallelujah. God, I'm hungry for you, God. I want to thirst after you so that you could feel me. Feel me till I want no more. Oh, God, feel me until I overflow, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. God, I want you to feed me, God. God, I want, Lord, a more. Change my taste buds. Diversify my palates for you, God, every aspect of you. Lord, I want to be willing and obedient. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. God, I want to be willing and obedient. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, the changes that are being made, God. Lord, we thank you for it right now. Lord, I thank you, God, for what you're doing right now in this young lady. God, thank you for what you brought her out of. Lord, God, even the relationship that could have killed her, God, I thank you, Jesus, for the protection and the peace. Thank you for her mind being kept, God. God, you didn't allow her to lose her mind. Lord Jesus, I praise you for keeping her. Thank you, God, for your peace that you're giving her even right now. In the name of Jesus, God, we glorify you, Jesus. God, I praise you. God, we need an addiction, God. Lord, we need an addiction. Jesus, oh, hallelujah. God, I need an addiction. I need an addiction for you. Hallelujah, God. Oh, Jesus. God, put me in that place. Oh, Jesus. Oh, God, take her higher, Lord. Lord, take the limits off. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you for breaking chains, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for lifting burdens. God, give her the addiction, God. To ministry, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for doing it, God. Hallelujah. Oh, God, keep the stirring, God. Oh, God, bring that addiction, God. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, God, we need it. Hallelujah. God, we need it. We need it, God. We need it. We need it, Lord. We need it, God. Hallelujah. 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 Ha! Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Oh, God. 
God, God, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, God, give me that addiction, Lord. I am outside. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Oh, God, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, God. God be a comforter. Hallelujah. God be a comforter. Hallelujah, Jesus. Comfort right now, Jesus. Oh, God, comforter. God, I praise you. Thank you for the love, God. Thank you for your love. Thank you for keeping her, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I praise you. I praise you. I praise you. I praise you, God. I praise you, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. Hallelujah, Jesus. God, I praise you. God, I praise you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for what you're about to do, God. Thank you, Jesus. God, I praise you. 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 Lord, 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 I praise you. God, I praise you. God, I praise you. God, I praise you. Lord, I praise you. Thank you, Jesus. Hey, glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. 